2014 Chevrolet SS. Now, most Chevy people know that an SS stands for Super Sport. I would argue in this case it stands for Superstar, as in spy novel turned thriller Hollywood born identity kind of blockbuster mixed with like religious biopic drama kind of thing. Because think about it. This is the only car on the planet that has survived bankruptcy, has survived government, international espionage and intervention, and has resurrected itself from the dead. I know, very bold claims, but follow me on this one for a minute. This car was formerly known as the Pontiac G8. It came from the Holden division in Australia, which was a General Motors product. Now, General Motors itself, an American car manufacturer, was one of two American car manufacturers that was put into a pre-packaged bankruptcy back in 2009. So that's point number one. Now let's move on to the second and significantly more bold point of the international espionage kind of government intervention. Um, I'd love to tell you that I know the ins and outs of this, but really it comes from our old good friend Bob Lutz, who shared my stage at the Peterson, that told us the literal blow-by-blow -blow of what happened when the idea of keeping Pontiac around uh, was floated to the government. Uh, and with the, with the Solstice and Solstice Coupe uh, and with the Pontiac G8, which was a great car, we were embarked on a strategy of making Pontiac different from the rest of GM in that Pontiac would not get any front wheel drive cars. It would all be rear wheel drive. And the next point, the next G6 was going to use the architecture of the Cadillac ATS. So oh. it was going to be a three series sized, wow. three series sized rear wheel drive Pontiac with basically the Cadillac ATS de-premiumized obviously and a lot of the cost taken out but still fundamentally that architecture that was going to be the next G6 and I think we could have moved Pontiac away from every other American volume brand and really started positioning it as a very attractive US alternative to some of the and, and obviously at much lower prices than the, the European rear wheel drive cars. But the Fed said, yeah, just let's, how much money you made in Pontiac in the last 10 years? Well, the answer was nothing. So they said, it, it goes. And, um, you know, when, when the guy who's handing you a check for $53 billion says, I don't want Pontiac or, or, you, or drop Pontiac or you don't get the money, it doesn't take you very long to make up your mind. And then there's point three, the whole resurrection thing. Now, I'm not trying to reinvent the Mel Gibson film here. But this car literally has resurrected itself from the dead. It started out in Australia with Holden with a little help of the folks at Opel in Germany. Then it moved on to Pontiac. Pontiac died, it went back to Holden. Holden then tweaked it a little bit and then sent it back to Detroit through Chevrolet. And here we are with the 2014 edition, now called the SS. Now to really understand this Chevrolet SS, I think we need to talk a little Pontiac ease. Back in the day when this was known as a G8, there were three levels. There was a V6 with 250 horsepower. Nobody wanted that car. Then there was the G8 GT, which had the 362 horsepower V8. And you hear me talk a lot about Lotus and Challenger. And I go on and on about those cars because I've spent an incredible amount of wheel time in both. Well, the G8 GT, actually, I've spent an incredible amount of wheel time with that car, and I just got to know an incredibly balanced performance sedan. It was the right amount of power with the right size car, kind of right suspension. The only thing wrong with it, you couldn't get a manual transmission, which the third level fixed. The G8 GXP, that was 415 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque, and a manual transmission. Granted, you can get automatic in that one, but why would you? Uh, a little bit of history here, show history. One of the first ever loans we ever got when we started the show was a G8 GXP. Red sunroof stick. Man, I love that car. Uh, and just a side note, if any of you have bought that car and still have it, don't sell it. Uh, you definitely have money in the bank and it's only going to go up from here. But I digress. That car, the, the size of the wheels were the same as the G8 GT with the performance package. Uh, the only thing different was 
the, the front end was a little bit different. You can get red inserts in the seats, but that was about it. So now, fast forward to 2014, and the only version you could get here is the GXP, which is the SS. 415 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque, but unlike the GXP, you cannot get a manual transmission. Now, I hear nasty rumors coming from Detroit that if they come true, they would be quite nice. Manual transmission, and they would change the suspension on this car, give it the magnetic ride control, from the Cadillacs or the Corvettes. Which brings up an incredibly important point, and that's the, the handling of this car. This is a big, heavy car, kind of like a CTS-V. That car has magnetic ride control, so you would go around a corner like this. It, it's not flat like a Lotus, but it can squat and you just kind of power through. Where this car is very similar in like an old Supra, where you've got to let it decide where it wants to put its weight and then power through a turn. So it's, it's a little bit more of a split second decision rather than just telepathically translating your thoughts through the magnetic ride control. Where we get into some trouble is the transmission. The issue is the pairing of this particular automatic with the personality of this particular engine. You just, you can't get the most out of it. Like in the CTS V-Sport, that transmission is so better suited to the 420 horse twin turbo engine where you know I can downshift a couple of gears, pick up and the car just does what I want it to do. Where notice here, this one, there was a delay. It's like the transmission, you say, hey, let's step down a gear and let's get some more power. And the car goes, uh, leave us, uh, leave us, uh. Now, ironically, the new CTS V Sport, not the V Series, the one with the 420 horse twin turbo V6, that car is a completely different setup from a completely different car company, I'd like to add. Ever since General Motors kind of went through their bankruptcy, they're thinking a little bit more efficiently. And I don't mean volt efficiently, I mean efficiently on how to build cars, make them lighter, make them stronger, make them think smarter. That's what the CTS V Sport does, and that's what I'd love to see the improvements here. They did use more aluminum in the SS as opposed to the uh, G8. The hood and the trunk lid are aluminum here, so the car is a little bit lighter, but it's not light enough where you notice a huge difference. And then there's the interior. If you've ever been in a Pontiac G8, it wasn't a bad place to be. As a matter of fact, it was better than most GM interiors of the time. It just wasn't as good as where everyone else was at the time. This case, it's significantly improved. Um, the materials, much better quality. They even put suede and some, I don't know if that's real leather or not, in the dash. The dash itself, it's nice. It's definitely improved over a G8, but it looks too much like an Impala for me. I would like to see, I mean, it's the, this is a performance sedan, man. I, I want to see more Corvette than, I, than Impala. Come on. Get Tom Peters in here to change some of these things. But I digress. Or this one has navigation in it. I think all of them come, actually, they all do come with navigation. Uh, but the G8s, if you remember, they had the big screen, but you couldn't get factory navigation in 2009. That was just a bit of a major oversight. Another thing that's very strange to me is this is an Australian car. Basically, the entire country is sunny, right? You'd think all of these cars would have sunroofs. Very few of them have sunroofs. Why is that? Oh, wait a minute, I completely forgot. This car has a head-up display, and every one of them actually come with a head-up display. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I don't understand why all cars don't come with a head-up display. I am willing to bet you that if every car had a head-up display, fatalities and accidents overall would decrease by orders of magnitude simply because of where your eye line is. Because at the end of the day, where you look, like in life, is where you go. So an interesting thing happened the other day. I took this car in to go pick up my dry cleaning, and usually when I have to go see the dry cleaner, I lot like two hours because Lloyd and Fernando, the guys who run the place, um, major car guys. So they like to come out, top cars. It's like an impromptu car show. So they come out, see this thing, and they're like, wow, that new Acura is really cool looking. Acura! Well, I'm a little bit biased, and it brings up a little bit of a point, actually a big point. I prefer the look of the Pontiac over this, but I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. So let's do a little bit of a straw poll. Vote in the comments below. Let me know, do you like the Pontiac or do you like the Chevy? Or hit us up via our social networks. Motoman TV, all one word. Motoman TV, all one word. 
Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So this is our third Shakedown film. When we did things in reverse on this one, we already shot the full episode of this car. And I know I say we're doing something different this time every time, and we usually do, but this one, rather than me try to explain it to you, I'm gonna show you some advanced clips. Okay, so here's the script. For a new Moto Man film every week, click subscribe. And to get a sneak peek of what's coming up on the show, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, Moto Man TV, all one word.